Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> no. Time for bladder check. Check. So it's a show? It's a lifestyle. It's a religion. <laughs> My emotions! My emotions! I'm still French. Ouais, c'est pas faux. I'm a woman, Mary. I can be as contrary as I choose. Non, moi je crois qu'il faut que vous arrêtiez d'essayer de dire des trucs. Hello, hi, I'm Laura. I'm gonna watch Vinland Saga season 2, episode 12. I watched this morning the episode 11. If you want to see my reactions and my thoughts about it, I'm gonna put the link into the eye. I'm gonna put the link for the playlist that I made for Vinland Saga in case you want to binge watch. All of my binge watching of Villain Saga, I watched all of the season 1 and the beginning of the season 2 with you guys. In case you're interested, you have the playlist and you have all of these reaction videos into the chronological order. Chronological! <laughs> I had trouble to say it, I don't know why. The last episode was really great, that was such a surprise for me to have Leif appearing suddenly coming out of nowhere, like I thought that at some point maybe we would have news about him and you saw it when Tolfin finally evolved emotionally after that big dream with Asclad and Thor's. Clearly my first thought, and it's kind of weird, my first thought when it happened it was oh, I want for life to meet that new version of Tolkien. So clearly I thought about a potential reunion, which could happen, you know, but I was like maybe end of the season two or maybe even later than that, like it's too soon or something like that. It can happen, it can happen. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but it can happen. There is a possibility right there for it to happen because Leif... No, first, Ketil and Orma they came to visit Harald, Harald died, they decided to stay to offer all of these gifts still to Knut to try to have his support and all to continue all of that politic support. Because of that, Oma, you know, uh, went on his own inside of this town, provoked a fight, is it truly a surprise? No. Acted stupid, is it truly a surprise? No. He almost fought against a guy and in fact that guy was the son of Leif. And when Leif appeared on screen I was like, how can it be possible? Like the percentage of chance for him to be right there in Denmark at the same time that Ketil and Alma are in Denmark also and that the two of them who know Tolfin can talk about him it was really like, it can't happen, it's not possible, but at the end, it happened. They met and they talked about Tolfin because that guy, you know, with whom Alma was that close to fight is named also Tolfin. I'm wondering about that for me, how they talked and all Leif and him, Leif and that Tolfin, it was almost like maybe Leif continued to search for Tolfin, we saw it. And you know, he was searching for a slave looking like that, with that description, named Tolfin. Maybe at some point he met that kid named Tolfin, looking like that, who was a slave, and maybe he had something for him and he decided to adopt that kid. I don't know. I have that impression. Maybe I'm totally wrong about it, but you know, I can't remember when we met Leif and all that he had a kid, that he had a son, a young one who was named like Tolfin, like, no, I don't think so. So for me, truly, it's an adoptive situation, which would be a really good story to discover at some point how it happened. They discussed with Ketia. Leif knows that there is an high probability that Ketia's Tolfin is his Tolfin, the real one. He wants to go, but we left him with that discussion with his crew like no we're not gonna lose time going right there it's about 10 days no we're not gonna lose time so we don't have the confirmation that Leif is gonna make that trip I really hope that Leif is not gonna give up because I really want for Leif to mate to meet the new Tolfin he deserves that he deserves that after all of this time spent you know lost 
on searching for him and when he found him the first time it was that dolphin, that teenager full of rage Leif needs that reward of finding Tolfin who found peace with himself and to see that adult, that man who is trying now to be like Thor's <sighs> I would give everything for this reunion to happen Not today! I'm not prepared yet Like that was truly really a surprise for me to have news from Leif today so I'm not prepared for a reunion today clearly but it needs to happen at some point after that, Ketir met another person who knows Tolfin really well. They didn't talk about him, but because of that meeting, maybe Knut, because I was talking about Knut, Knut and Tolfin are gonna meet again soon. Like really, uh, it's all about reunions, preparing in reunions, thanks to Ketir. Because Knut, he has all of that political plan about requisitioning territories. I think that it's really wrong to do that, but it's Knut, you know. It's dictator Knut who is in charge right now, so for sure he wants that. And he's gonna begin with Ketir, but he doesn't know yet that Tolfin is right there. Tolfin is a slave, so when he's gonna know that the king is coming, he's not gonna be able to escape. To run away when Knut is gonna meet him, how he's gonna react when Knut is gonna be truly there. I don't know how Tolfin is gonna react, and when Knut is gonna do his thing, you know, requisitioning the land, how is he gonna react? Also, um, I don't know, we'll see. But that's gonna be pretty cool, and maybe that it can happen during this episode. I don't know. You know, with the, the rhythm of this anime, I'm a little lost. Sometimes they are really taking entire episode for one moment and sometimes they are jumping, you know, entire years into one scene. So I don't know really how stuff can happen, at what rhythm. And I didn't forget that normally when Kutil is gonna come back home, Aina and Tolfin are supposed to be free. So can it happen? With that circumstance, you know, to come back with Knut, can it happen? We'll see also about it. But yes, the last episode was pretty great. I didn't cry. I kept my tears inside of my eyes when we had Leif and that possibility of maybe a reunion with Dolphin. I kept my tears inside of my eyes. If we have a real reunion right now, I'm not going to be able to keep the to keep them for sure. And that's it. I really don't know, yes, what can happen during this episode because I'm not sure of the rhythm that this anime is taking right now. So let's go, let's go for it to discover it together. Remember that if you want to have my Patreon on which you can have this episode earlier, you have four episodes of advance on my Patreon, which means two weeks of advance. It's really a lot of advance. I'm working out to give you that advantage on my Patreon to thank you for joining me right there because it's the best way to support me. I'm a little reactor on YouTube, so I'm really not considered by the platform, believe me. So really, if you want to support me for real, it's on my Patreon. Even if it's just for one month, it can be truly appreciated. So yes, you're gonna have this advance, two weeks of advance. You're gonna have longer reaction parts, sometimes even the full one and the full opacity for the reaction part, all of that. Let's go for this episode! <laughs> the audacity, that's really the only thing that he has for himself. <laughs> you're not soldiers, you're not the ones who are Supposed to hire him right there. <gasps> you're a butterfly killer? It's to say that you're a killer? Yes, you're like a little fly. Blood? For real? 
These guys really know the king's gold. <laughs> they are really like the Yen in the Lion King, you know, like not killing that much. By looking him like that, you're gonna create the worst villain ever! <laughs> You stupid as hell old man, but you, die, you don't deserve that. It was his dream, you know. Sorry for him, he's really pa pathetic, you know, but I'm sorry for him. At least your brother is supporting you. You're giving him his friends. that you did it but no it's that guy who blinded him why why did he help you why because you knew you're strong enough down here you can do it Oh really, you're a butcher, uh, tell your, your honey, I'm doing the fight. Oh, 
Again, it's just his head, how he was when he died. When you're not calling him dead. Beginning? He's already in tweet. when I'm gonna sit on that couch I'm gonna be prepared for that reunion like I would have had days to think about it and I would know that uh, today we're gonna have the reunion today I'm gonna cry when I'm not prepared for that today like I was not prepared for that today so I'm glad that it didn't happen it didn't take me that much by surprise I'm glad and I don't see yes it's a preview I'm not watching previews and just, if you're wondering, each time I'm checking if we have an hidden scene or not, each time, just in case. I prefer to be sure to not miss anything. Oh, so I was totally wrong. I totally misread that conversation between Knut and 
wolf about what they could do with Alma. Alma is dream it was to be a part of the king's guard. Wolf was like, wow, really, the guy is so useless, no, we're not going to take him. And what he responded, Knut, it was something like, in fact, we can find a way to make him useful. Wolf said, ah, yes, I know what you mean by that. And Knut responded, and that's how we're going to be able to requisition, take Ketil's land. I really thought that Knut's plan was, okay, we're going to take Arma with us, so we're going to have him and we can threaten Ketil with that, like, you see, your boy is working for us right now, if you want to kill him, we can do it as we want, or just also to manipulate Arma, to brainwash him, to make him forget his dad, you know, I imagined plenty of stuff like that, but I was totally wrong about it. Knut's plan, it was to provoke Arma that much that he would kill at least one of the guards so they could put that, you know, that blame on Arma so on Kutir so they, they would force Kutir to give his land. So that's why that guy took all of the worst members you know, of the king's guard being sure that they would mock Omar, they would humiliate him, so the boy would respond to that and at the right moment he intervened to make blind that guy so Omar would kill him. I don't think that, you know, he knew that Torgir would intervene and would in fact kill all of them and after that who killed even more people because he would understand that something is wrong and that in fact all of that was a trap to put the blame on Omar to make him kill someone so when it was revealed I'm like okay so it was all of that for that at the end I'm also surprised by Torgir's reaction in the sense that we met him only once and he appeared really like for sure a strong big guy but also someone who is, oh, I don't know how to say it. Not Omar kind of stupid, but his own way to be stupid, meaning that he just cares about fighting, killing, and stuff like that. I really thought so. Like the only thing that he was talking about last time that we met him, it was really the numbers of people that he killed, the numbers of women that he took, took, so I really had this emotion that the guy was just awful, awfully stupid, you know, like that he was not useful for anything else than that. So right there to see him reacting like that, killing all of these people, I was like, okay, I have the confirmation of that first impression. It's just a butcher, you know, someone who enjoys to fight and to kill. Someone who would be friend, I think, with Bjorn. Not Torker, but with Bjorn, is that kind of fighter, I think. But to see that he guessed all of that and he declared, you know, haha, our enemy is strong, like now he's not switching, but he's not gonna fight for the crown anymore, for Knut anymore, and he really cares about his family, about protecting his family the owner of his family that is okay to be at war with the king, to escape from him, to come back home, so maybe he's gonna find a way to defend himself and all. Like, that is truly a surprise for me. I think that right there, by coming back home, they don't have the intention to wait for Knut and his army to come and to, to not do anything about it, like, to just be like, oh, we're sorry, that's it, you can have our land. No, no. Torgir is gonna want to defend his land, his place and all of that. So yes, that was a surprise for me to see that someone like Torgir, the kind of fighter that he is, would really think and care about his lands, about his family, about the honor of his family and about protecting his lands. Like, I'm truly really surprised about it, in the good sense. For all of them to escape with life, I'm so glad because it means that they're gonna guide him to their place and they already talked about Torfin 
and about the fact that Leif would have Thorfinn. So Thorfinn, uh, you can consider that he's not going to be free because he's going to be like Leif is going to own him. No matter what, we're going to have the reunion. Like we are going to have the reunion and Leif can have Thorfinn with him. I cannot wait for Leif to meet that new version of Thorfinn. What does it mean for Einar? What does it mean really for this land? Like, I'm thinking about Einar, I'm thinking about Arnaid, I'm thinking about Snake. They're gonna have to fight to defend their land. Like, Snake is fighting, he's, he's right there to, to secure Ketir's land. He's not a fighter who is gonna accept to fight against Knut's army. He's not that loyal to Kutsion, you know? Is he? We'll see. That was a good episode. Next time, Reunion. Leif and Thorfinn's Reunion. Maybe soon Knut and Thorfinn Reunion, but first, Knut has to find a way to take Kutsion's land and all. It's gonna take more time, I think. Okay, that was great. That was so great. These uh, two episodes that I watched together, they really made me impatient for the next session I've been watching and now I'm prepared at least for what is gonna happen. Cool, really cool. Okay, so it's all for you and for me for today. So it's all for me for now. So bye for now. Bye. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh... Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Crazy.